Uh, hey, does anyone want to ask some questions? <laughs> oh, look at all those people over there. Hi. Hi. Uh, we don't really want to ask a question. We just want to apologize for running in off on Robin. Yeah. Do you know how many women have apologized to me for that? <laughs> you know how many times I hear that? I'm sorry, I never done that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but then that. <laughs> really? <laughs> we, we just wanted to, you know, bow down and say, for your mercy. Don't feel so much. We apparently miss a lot, and, you know, we're terrible oh, people. Yeah. But, oh no. <laughs> oh yeah, social networking. Yes, really. Okay. Well, I accept your apology. It still hurts though. <laughs> you can sew it up, but you still see the tear. Well, it had a little bit more weight calculate that tin. <laughs> What is so important? The guild. 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 The
Yeah, I'm thinking he's the closest. Yeah. On SG1, uh, Rick was, yeah, he was, O'Neill became Richard. Richard. Yeah. Yeah. And on Atlantis, hmm. Hmm. David's not really like McKay. He is in some ways, but he's, he's so goofy. Um, I don't know about Atlantis. Maybe Joe. Would be the most like his character. Because that's that David kind of testing. David is obsessed with me, with good reason. <laughs>
And, and uh, he said, you know, if you have a chance to have some fun, just go for it. And Rick came crawling up this glacier with, you know, the bad leg. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's just like, it just seemed ridiculous all of a sudden. So that, that's what came out. <laughs> a guy from a gadget, my gimmick, my useless. <laughs>
episode. Next episode. It's an episode called Mind Smooth. And it isn't all too brief. Somebody gets it on.
And so Robin is like a shoe guy. He like knows women. I can sell women's shoes and that one's about totally, right. He knows so much about He's called the porn I watch. They're children. And then we have the Flintstones. Backyard <laughs> 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 stuff like that. Uh, yeah. uh, and so anyway, I, I'm looking for boots and Robin literally goes around with this guy from Saks and goes, we want to try those, 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 those. And he brought over these shoes. This guy came over and said, yeah, we'd like you to try on these shoes. And I was like, really? <laughs> okay. You were Robin. And I tried them on and they were really comfortable. And yeah, next thing I know, so I buy the boots. I find a pair of boots, so I buy the boots. And, and then the sales guy comes up with this bag. And it's the shoes, and Robin bought them for me. I, I just, I said, um, isn't that sweet? Like it was so nice. I was like, you did not just buy me a pair of shoes. I saw Amanda put the shoes on, and she walked across the room, and with, without going into more detail than you care to know, I wasn't about to stand up at any time. You know what? It's a crime against humanity if she doesn't walk out of here with those shoes. It's a crime against humanity. And, uh, you know, quite well. <laughs> I'm not about to stand up right now. I'm just thinking. <laughs> You know, I, I think it's it's one one of the there's many many amazing things about, about being able to do these things for us. First of all, it's amazing to, to, to be able to fly around the world to come to visit amazing places like Australia, <laughs> Melbourne, um, and you know we, we spend a lot of time in, in, in a studio in Vancouver working on this show, and, and, and we're very excited about it. But it's amazing to, to come here and talk to you guys and, and, and be able to interact with people who love the show too. And, and I think. The one thing that I, I dislike about doing these things is, is, is there's just not enough time to talk to everybody. And, and well, I mean, there's time to talk to everybody, but not you know for long enough to, to really get into the show. And so you know, let's let's do it for a week next time. Let's let's. Yeah. Is it, we'll we'll stay with some of you guys. And then we'll do it. Amanda will bring her shoes. It'll be awesome. <laughs> Uh, the Xenos is a, uh, an animated series that uh, I'm doing with William Shatner. I know, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I, I met <coughs> Bill. <laughs> uh, I love him. Oh, oh. uh, I met Bill at Comic Con a couple of years ago, and uh, he, uh, he interviewed me for MyOutersPace.com, which is his sort of multi platform website for all things geek. So it's really cool. And uh, I got a call a couple months later saying, you know, Bill's doing this animated series, he's getting fans to write it, and it's going to be a really interactive, connected to the fan base kind of thing, and he wants you to play his wife on it, and, uh, you know, are you interested? <laughs> yeah. So we've, we've done, uh, I think, three or four episodes. I was in L.A. a few months ago, and we, Bill and I went to a Bill. <laughs> <laughs> went into uh, a soundstage in LA and uh, laid down a few of the episodes with some amazing voice actors. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen with them. They just uh, they put out a, a contest now to find a composer. It's really cool because it's actually getting the fans completely involved and uh, in a really cool and respectful and fun way. So, well, so I, I don't know what's going to happen with it. Uh, they're talking about doing a movie. Ashley Tisdale wants to be in it playing our daughter. And uh, it's this couple, kind of like um, uh, like an old musical couple, like um, 
what was it, Captain and Camille, is that their one? Like them, only like 30 years later, still trying to make a name for themselves, but they are, they're aliens and they travel the galaxy in a speed up RV spaceship kind of thing with their two kids and they think they still got it, but they totally don't. <laughs> but their kids are really talented. So it's, it's quite fun. Bye! Bye, let's put it at the guild. <laughs> Tell them you said hi. Yeah, you did that. <laughs> that's twice that's happened. Uh, uh, that's, now we've gotten rid of it. Let's talk. <laughs> hi guys, um, my name's Brandon. Uh, hi Brandon. Um, how you doing? You're talking about your really nervous before the cocktail party. I mean, I was, it took me like an hour to work up the courage to come say hi. <laughs> I grew up watching Stargate. It's my favorite show of all time. It's, it's a brilliant show. Thank and you. I think Carter's so popular. I think there's a little bit of Carter in all of us. Like, okay, <laughs> you represent all of us. We all like Carter. Like, we all, we all make the character. Yeah. There's a relatable character that being Carter is most Oh, definitely. And, I, you know, it's brilliant being on TV, that's great. Um, I have a question for you, I just want to ask. Um, in, the, in both your shows, there's uh, times when there are very difficult decisions your characters have to make, and you may not, as a person, not your character, you may disagree quite a lot with what your character is trying to do whether they're an evil character or a good character. Especially on Stargate, there was like lots of, you know, whole worlds of people oh, yeah. in the balance. Yeah. And it just blew up the sun. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Jack would be like, we're going to go too bad, you know? Um, how, do you, how do you deal with and even portray things where you disagree strongly with what your character is deciding to do? That's, that's where it, you just have to be an actor. That's where you have to really disassociate. Uh, and I think Carter, even if she were a real person, would struggle with some of the decisions that were made. You know, or go, really, if I push this button, that entire planet, what, really? Uh, but she, being part of the military hierarchy, understood that she, she had to follow orders. So uh, I, Amanda, could never have done half the things that Carter did. I, I would say no. <laughs> Sorry. I don't feel comfortable with that. But Carter understood how the military hierarchy worked, and I have to totally respect her for that. Um, Helen made some crazy decisions, in, uh, especially beginning of season two, where it's like, I, I can't even fathom how you can make that decision, but that's, you know, it's part of what makes the characters that we play so interesting is their flaws, uh, and, and the fact that you don't always agree with what they're doing. Like playing an enigma is really interesting. So that, I, I think you just, become an actor, that's when it's, okay, this isn't me, I can't, I can't wrap my head around it, but this is what she would do. If, it were, if I were playing myself all the time, I would be born. <laughs> well, well, what are you suggesting? <laughs> I don't play with myself all the time. <laughs> Sometimes, but not all the time. <laughs> um, I think... I already, I already said the warning. I said, well, if there's any children in this room, don't listen to me. Oh, okay. Well, let me just reiterate the warning. <laughs> any children in this room, don't listen to me or to say the things that I say, because I'm a very, very awful man. <laughs> the kids are like, yeah, we know. <laughs> I think, though, uh, speaking to your question, I think one of the one of the very interesting things about the character of Magnus is that. Uh, I, I, it's a word I use to describe as presidential. You know, she's she's a, she's a character that has to uh, look at, constantly look at the big picture and and, and make these difficult decisions, uh, even when you know people around her like Will and, and, and Henry and people in the sanctuary are disagreeing because she's she's looking at the overall picture. And I think uh, sometimes as humans, it's hard it's hard for us to do that all the time. So we we can look at it at a, at a, at a, uh, a specific decision that a character makes and disagree with that without necessarily being able to look at the big picture and see that that's sort of the greater good. And I think that's, that's one of the really nice things that, that the character of Magnus has, has been created. I think it's a very, very good quality. You know, if only you had that. <laughs>
Oh, come on. See, all day she's saying things to me. I say one thing and I lose the room. I lose the room. I love you guys. You know what I'm saying? Just like, I mean, that's a scrap of my bucket list. Oh, cool. Thank you. Hello. I'm, I'm so thank you for what you do. Um, you're very passionate about what you do. Sorry, what were you? Brilliant. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question for Amanda, and I just wanted to, um, obviously, it sounds like you're very familiar with science, and I just, uh, I didn't know whether that was a part of your job as an actor to be familiar with your content, but are you personally interested in any field of science or work? I mean, when I graduated high school, I, I won the Environmental Science Award, and I was really interested in biology. Uh, then, taking on the role of Carter, I I felt it was really important that I absolutely understood what I was talking about, and so I uh, I went to great pains to learn as much as a human can learn about astrophysics. And so that when I spoke, I really understood what I was saying. And now I find that field fascinating. And especially, you know, what was happening recently with the speed of sound and neutrinos, and I was like, oh, this is a face on physics! Oh my god, everything we thought we held true! Oh. And I really geeked out on that idea. And then it turned out that it's okay. Everything is okay. Nothing has to change. It's great, because you're really good with your words, and um, I saw what you were saying, and I was about 17, and I ended up coming in um, while this, so... Oh, cool. So, um, yeah, just thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of inspiration, so. Thank you. Thank you. A few questions, Amanda. Um, who do you like to ignore out of Sam and Agnes? Sam. For Sam. Yeah, Helen yeah, I, I, Helen confuses me a lot. I dig her. I think she's really cool. And I love playing her, but I, I, I understood Sam better. Okay. We had Michael Shannon sitting there proud of him last year. We had that point of view. What was it like working with the rest of SG1, like with the crew? What was it like working with the rest of the cast? Yeah. Oh. We, we had way too much fun on that show. Okay. <laughs> well, I hear both Michael Shanks and Chris Judge are very much the uh, tricksters. Yes. <laughs> we, we laughed without a word of a lie every single day. And I have to say the same is true of Sanctuary. We laugh and laugh loudly and fully, like, belly laugh every day. All day, every day. All day, every day. <laughs> we, we barely get the show done. <laughs> But yeah, the cast was a, the cast of SG1 was really, really fun. There's only okay. one more about one. And, and they have to wait to get in here. You have three. Are you done? I just have one, one quick question. Okay, so is there any chance of Robin relapsing into the metamorphose? Like Robin relapsing into the metamorphose kind of like. Reptilian There's always a chance of Robin relapsing into many, many different things. <laughs> Short questions, and if your first question is, I have three questions, I will shoot you through. <laughs> okay, so a short, a short question. That's respect. Sort of, that's that's respect. That's that's what Don't hold back, though, just say what you really think. Yes. Um, my question is for Amanda. Last year, when Michael Shanks was here, he was telling us a story about how he had a scene which was only two minutes of him just speaking, walking down a hall, and for the life of him, he could not do it. It took him, I think he said, 15 takes, and the final one he's like, never again. Did you ever have a similar experience, especially having to say all of the stuff that Sam said? No, I'm, I'm just that much better. <laughs> so tongue twisty that, uh, and, and I mean, that's basically how we get our outtakes, is us trying to get through some of the gobbledygook. Um, but I, I know what you're talking about with Mike, I remember that, so, that, that, and that yeah, yeah, it's happened to me, for sure. Okay, um, real quickly, firstly, what was like to change your hair from blonde to brown? Did you, like, freak out, or? No, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I <laughs> Oh, sorry. I, that's awkward. I, 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 I would like freak 
I'd be looking in the rearview mirror of my car and be like, I'm just driving my car. <laughs> Uh, the hardest part, I, I mean, I actually, it took a long time to get used to it. The hardest part was that I didn't look like Olivia anymore. And she was really sweet about it. I wore the wig and showed her what mommy's hair was going to look like. And when I came in after getting it dyed, she was in the bath and she's like, I like your hair, mommy. <laughs> and then <clears throat> about a year later, she was really mad at me because I wouldn't give her something that she wanted. And she said, and by the way, I don't like your brown hair. <laughs> Yeah. So that's the only the only hard part is that I used to look a lot like my daughter, and now I don't. Okay, and really quickly, I mean, um, do you think that there should have been a Sam Jack confirmation in SG1? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think that's something, right? They waited for so long. There should have just been something. You know, where he, his phone rings and she goes flying back and he goes to answer it and it's Behind it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. the audience goes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, they don't even have to mention it again. Yeah. <laughs> it's frustrating. Does, does Rick feel the same way? Like, did he like the, the relationship? Oh, yeah, we loved playing it. I mean, I hope he felt the same way. <laughs> <laughs> we, we both seem to enjoy playing that tension. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. I did have three questions, but I won't. I'll have one question appropriate to both of you. Which one is your favourite flavoured Granville Island beer, if you actually drink beer? I don't drink beer, so... <laughs> okay, I like the one I liked the dancing in the century, volleyball dancing. Sorry, I had eyes cut you off. Oh, no, that's okay. I like the lager, because I like lager and lime. And I don't drink beer very often, but if I do, it's lager and lime. I drink you guys that. know that with roses, lime, cordial, and lager, and you mix it. <laughs> this is Australian. <laughs> you want to try it. It's really nice. It's a lovely little... You know, it's very nice. No, I drink this. I drink Guinness, yeah. I drink an Irish beer called Guinness. I don't know if you guys know that. <laughs> My dream job is I'm going to be the uh, the global uh, the spokesperson. He was. Ah, don't you think he'd be great? Yeah. He gets to just travel the world. And they wouldn't have to pay me. They just pay me in product. <laughs> Back the truck up. That's my driveway there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, why did he call that? Um, I'd like to have a huge round of applause. <laughs>